Welcome back to the greenhouse today guys. Thank you for joining us. We are going to be experimenting with some heat moving systems with some relatively cheap or free materials. We got some free fuel and some pieces we bought to experiment with this. So we're going to get hands on today and build some stuff. And if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get right into this. My back is burning. Keep that in the video. So today's video is based off of having a greenhouse stove. Now I understand not everybody may have a greenhouse stove. But also, everybody might not have a compost heating system or they may not have a geothermal system. So anything I can share to build upon whatever somebody has or an idea they had to get going on their own project. So we are sharing based off having a greenhouse stove and being able to pull some free heat. We shared a video where we were sifting all of our free fuel from our compost heater, some wood chips that didn't break down that were on the outer shell. So we're able to filter through those and take the small material, feed it to our plants, take the large material and recycle it as a free fuel source. That is why I say free because we got it absolutely free, do a little bit of work with it and basically refine it to the burnable material, the nice solid chunks of wood and we're able to get a nice hot fire. And with all the BTUs we create from that fire, we're going to experiment with moving heat. We're going to be getting our tunnel set up in here. So there's going to be a lot coming down the pipe very shortly. We are just just in the first initial setup phases of building this little heat moving system. So before we start building this system, I wanna finish making our tea. My son and I had came out to the greenhouse this morning and it's still pretty darn early. It's about 6.30 in the morning right now. He was out here getting his fishing lures in order, going through his tackle box, checking on his fish. Now, we have this little spot in the greenhouse, lots of little crops popping up in here now. Quite hard to see some of the smaller sprouts there. Jumping down to this bed with our tomatoes tied up here, we've got some purslane. Now this purslane is just a weed, but it is much more than a weed. It's very high in vitamin A and C, and it might be high in other minerals and nutrients that I'm not aware of. I am not super familiar with the contents of purslane, but I do know that it has some health benefits for you, but there is also some health risks. So we only use a little bit whenever we do, and not very often because they contain a lot of oxalates that are calcium binders and they can lead to kidney damage or kidney stone development. So if you've got a predisposition and are susceptible to any type of kidney problems or anything like that, I would suggest doing research and possibly not using purslane, but a normal healthy person can use small amounts of this. It's very good for you. There's a lot of healing benefits. You can rub it right on your skin, on a sore or dry skin or something. There is very good health benefits to the plant. I just suggest everybody does their own research in depth before they actually start taking something new. So our purslane is right down here. I just like to keep it. It started sprouting on its own. Now it's kind of seeding and spreading. So however long we can keep that into the winter. It is another resource we have for pretty well free. So we've got our purse lane and we've got some of our long pine needles. So we're just gonna go right ahead and drop the purse lane. We're gonna go ahead and drop the pine needles in here. So we've got ourselves some tea brewing here. This little fan moves 130 cubic feet per minute. So. This is the fan that I have had for a little over a year now. I specifically bought another one just because I like the quality and the reliability. And we bought this one just for specifically moving heat from this stove or from compost heating. This will only be ran off of solar power. So we can power this for free and the $30 or so that I spent to acquire this fan will definitely make itself up in electricity consumption off of our solar system. So I just stoked the fire out here. We do have our door open, but it is darn chilly out this morning. We were out here in sweatshirts until we got the fire going, and then the greenhouse warms up very quickly because of our double layers. So we got a nice warm workspace that has a nice steady cool breeze coming through. So we're heating the outside today while we make some tea. I'm going to get this fan set up. I'm going to place it underneath my bench here. So hopefully I can set the camera up and get a good angle of this. We've got two little Phillips screws. We are going to tack this guy in. It came with a nice little mounting plate on the bottom. So we're gonna get this thing set up here. Ah. 
so now that we've got our fan hooked up we've got our power lines we can wire up underneath the bench here and kind of tuck them away just how it's set up you can see that it is directly in line going to be blowing straight down at all of these beds here so just simply routing this fire resistant aluminum ducting here we'll be able to run it all the way through this little hanger we made with some hanger wire now we just tacked it right into our bench there we'll be able to extend this out I need to set the camera down and free up my hands So we were able to smash our tape on there. We've got a nice good seal there. And that's why I really like this tape because it's form fitting and it holds its shape. It's got a little more continuity than just regular duct tape or something like that. And I've recycled it. When you buy the nice aluminum tape, you can use it over and over. Simply taking a small piece of wire and just wrapping it around. I just want to show what I was doing here. You can see my wires, I cut off the tag ends. I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and twist it to really tighten that thing down and form a good seal. Well, we got ourselves a nice seal. I can tug on this bad boy and you can see it moving on the mount. So we've got a very nice solid seal on there. Now we just got to route this to our stove. The sun is finally starting to rise behind me through this little window on the corner under my bench here. We got out here pretty darn early this morning. I need to drink some tea, get up and move around a little bit before I work my brain anymore on this project. Now, if you guys have any brainstorms or ideas for this air to air heat moving, we're just moving, pulling hot air. We've got this 80, 90 degree brick that's just sitting right in the heat zone. And if we can pull air through this brick, through these little flags, we can create a good heater just off of the clay brick and the free wood, free BTUs from our stove. So we're building upon this. We're gonna have a water heating system also. There's a much more we can do. We have our little fan up top here, right here, that heats up. It's actually pretty darn warm. We don't have enough sun to operate all of our air moving systems right at the moment. Nice steamy tea there. This tea smells absolutely amazing. I love making our own fresh tea. It's a little warm, but it's got a little tang to it, all the vitamin C. All right, break time is over now. So, I showed the little wire hanger. This wire hanger, it's like two or three bucks for a bag of maybe three or four feet. I don't know 100% on how much you get, but it's darn cheap. So I've been using this wire hanger. I showed a bracket. It's very simple to just pull it apart. And you've got yourself a wire ring that is going to hold and last and be recyclable. Oh. Oh. All right, there you go, buddy. Careful, it's hot. So we've got our little bracket here. And what I like to do is take maybe the last two holes and bend those flat. So. I'm gonna go ahead and do it and then show everybody up close what I'm talking about. So here we go. We've made ourselves a very simple little bracket here. I mean, they're not 100% flush with each other, but you run a screw through there and you've got yourself a nice hanging bracket for any type of piping or tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this up and then we will finish routing our heating pipe here. Dad, it's supposed to get up to 90 degrees today. Yeah, it's gonna be hot. I know. Good thing we're going to Franken Creek. All right guys, so we have this fully set up and it's operating like I want it to. So this brick right in front of our fan is 101 degrees. That sun is really peaking now. It is getting bright and it's putting some heat in the greenhouse. It was darn chilly this morning, but we still have our doors open because it is so darn warm during the day. It'll be like 40 degrees at night and 80 during the day. So we do not want our doors closed up just yet. 
very soon we will be closing our doors and starting to really heat this greenhouse up. But hopefully everybody understands the concept of what we're achieving with this fan and routing system. I just wanted to show the temperature on the brick that it is pulling 100 degrees through. So I want to show the whole system as a whole operating now that the sun is up and we have some solar activity on our panels. But if anybody has any ideas going forward, I'm going to expand upon this myself a bit on the heating side. This is pretty well set. I may be able to put a piece of metal with holes in it there to pull a little more heat, but those bricks will hold the heat a lot longer than a thin piece of metal. So the bricks have the thermal mass. You'd have to have a thick piece of steel to be able to pull heat for a long time after the heating source has died out. We are going to be hooking our tunnels up, all of our grow tunnels for the winter time. We are going to try and route this into the grow tunnels as a heating source and as just a nice air circulation source. We will have geothermal, we will have compost heating, heating the greenhouse as a whole. We will have our stove when those really, really cold nights when we require heating a stove, we are going to be able to put a lot more heat to the plants. We didn't have anything set up like this last year and I really am interested to see what I can do with this this winter. Now, some other ideas. Now, I could heat some thermal mass with this, but air to air, is a lot less potent trying to heat rock or water it's going to take a lot longer of a cycle to actually put the heat to it as the air heats it up blowing over it heating water is going to take a lot more energy from the stove heating aspect but the thermal mass that it holds is going to be five times greater than what we can achieve with the air heating so going forward we may be able to use some thermal mass from heating we may use a solar thermal heater as a separate entity from this stove heating system. I also thought about running some drain tile underneath the floor all the way to the other side of the greenhouse and blowing the heat out on the other side. So we can immediately have 100 degrees coming out or close to 100 degrees, whatever the stove's putting off onto the bricks down at the other side, blowing up and constantly circulating, possibly doing an under bed heater, some type of PVC system with holes that we can basically blow heat up under rock or under the bed. And another idea for next spring is to have some type of mobile little seedling starter where I can fit four or five trays of seedlings and keep them in a warm area, whether it's compost heating or whether it's heating from the stove, thermal mass, geothermal, any of the sort. So simply by using cheap and free resources and putting our brains to it and just experimenting over the last seven, eight, nine years, however long it's been now, we can achieve some good BTU potential down on the other side because this side heats up very quickly from our stove. It's just radiant heat. But being able to move that heat is going to be super beneficial for us. Like I said, we didn't have a whole lot as far as moving the heat other than the little systems that are already arranged on the back wall and on the stove top. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. We can check the actual system out now and plug it in and see if it works properly. Checking the whole system out, we've got our fan mounted under the bench, a few cobwebs here and there, use some wire to keep this pipe relatively up kept so I don't have to worry about when I'm stacking wood in here, like breaking, bending, popping this. So we've got it routed and basically a 90 degree bend here some homemade brackets and you can see we will be able to pull right through this brick that is getting heated up and this is sitting relatively close about a foot or less away from the exhaust pipe creating a lot of heat and the brick is still warm the fire's been out for maybe 15 minutes now because we just let her die down the thermal mass of the brick is going to hold a lot of decent heat be able to be blown down through the tunnels and beds so let's go ahead and swap we're going to unhook our geothermal for a minute here so this fan uses a little more energy than our geothermal our geothermal is a lot quieter because it's a much smaller fan so this was just pulsing also along with our compost heating fan over there pulsing 
So it's performing the same pulse because it's not 100% in the sun. It's catching light through the greenhouse onto the panels. So I'm going to route an on off switch. So I'll be able to flip a switch and then turn this on so it doesn't just run autonomously all the time. I just stole the energy from our geothermal for the time being to show that it's operating. We're pulling some good air. I'm not gonna take air temperatures or show airflow just yet. That'll be for another video when we actually get our tunnel set up in here and get it all planted out. So any questions or ideas you guys may have for me, definitely drop those below. I always like interacting with all of the ideas that we get. It really, really helps build the channel and it helps build better experiments too. I take a lot of your guys' information and kind of mull it over and do some research and build out things that are going to be self-sufficient, cheap, and or free. So. This is another great heating experiment. I'm going to bring all the data from it to see what BTUs we can put out, how much heat, and how sustainable it really is on those very cold nights. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. We are going to go do some fishing now, so I will see everybody in the next one.